ba, 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 ba. there we go. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. <coughs> Hi, cubies and newbies. Uh, I am Sunshine. This is the AB Cube method for solving Rubik's Cubes. Why are you tilted? Sorry. Okay. <coughs> Good morning. Uh, formula. This I am the creator of the AB Cube method. Formula A is four moves. <coughs> formula B is eight moves. Four moves right here. Uh, one row, one column. We'll hold the cube in your hand and look at it as if, hold it in your hand and look at the front face as if you're looking at a spreadsheet with rows and columns. <coughs> the arrow represents the slice that you're going to turn. The line represents the rest of the cube holding still. So, if you apply formula A to the middle row and the middle column, this happens out, down, in, up. You get boxes. Uh, the three, the three that twist, are the top, front, and right. Again, this piece is one is going to go to the top, so you move it away. The it's going to land in this space. So you move the space down, in, and up. Once more, we'll get it solved. Out, down, in, up. Okay. If you use <coughs> the bottom row in the right column, you're working. You're bring, switching these two. You're bringing a cor corner to the top, bring a piece to the top, and also switching the corners corners around. Out, down, in, up, out, down, in, up. See how it twisted? Bringing pieces to the top, and it's usually it's up for the first four corners. It's always done in multiples of three of six, and when you do it six times. You get back to start. Nothing has happened. Uh, so the only the only thing is is that uh, so in the middle when the cubes are the way you want them, you slide the top to preserve that cube and will continue with a different cube. So you, it, it only affects the pieces you want to affect. Formula B is eight moves. Top row, two columns. Moves three pieces and only three pieces around. <coughs> top row and outside columns. Slide up, slide up. Slide down, slide down. Uh, worked on the top corners. This one remained the same. These three all moved one position. Okay, so it moved three pieces. Up, up, down, down. Moved them again. Up, up, down, down. So, so formula A brings a piece to the top. Twist corners, formula B moves three pieces around. That's all you ever need to do to solve every complexity Rubik's Cube. Uh, I usually, I, everyone. <laughs> uh, there's no order of operations. You can do it however, whatever order you want to. Uh, I usually do the corners first, then the edges, and then the centers last. The reason I do that is because, number one, several reasons. Number one, regardless of what cube you have, they all have eight corners. So regardless of what cube you have, you can start in and do the corners. El Omen Gaming Hub wants to restart. Okay, <coughs> and uh, the if there's going to be a parity, a parity is something that happens on a, a, a cube that you have that does not that cannot happen on a three by three, a standard three by three. <coughs> we call it a parity just because the three by three was first, and so whatever happens on the three by three is normal. <laughs> Everything else is confusing. So. <coughs> But a parity, a parity is when there's two pieces and only two pieces that need to switch. Can't happen on a three by three because every, there's always a formula B moves three pieces around. But it can happen on a four by four or larger, an even number cube or larger, and also on the void cube because on the for the absolute center you know where the, that the piece is when the, when the center slice is centered is oriented correctly because it lines up to the axis the corners but when you have a 4 by 4 or an even number cube or something larger you don't actually have any way of knowing whether the center slice is correct or not so we just assume the center slice doesn't matter <coughs> but it does so if you get a parity where two pieces and only two pieces need to switch, it is because the slice that touches that parity is a quarter turn off, rotate a quarter turn, solve the edges in that position, and the parity has poof disappeared. Uh, this the it does alter the centers. I always does, which is why I do my centers last, so it really doesn't matter. Centers can be done first or last. It doesn't matter. It's the same number of same orient same <laughs> same doing. Uh, so, this two formulas works on every complex Rubik's Cube. No 
angry parody algorithms. <laughs> no long complex parody algorithms. Also works on every minx. This is a dodecahedron. Uh, gig, gig, mega minx, giga minx. No, mega the Gigaminx is my 5x5. Five five. This is the Terraminx. This is a 7x. That's a 7x. So again, formula A brings piece to the top, twists the corners. Formula B moves three pieces around, and that's all you ever need to do. Uh, there's an order of operations on the minxes in that uh, if one of the two columns you're using is the center slice, which is what needed in order to work on the star pieces, then it moves more than three pieces around because we're using the center slice because it's odd shaped. Uh, moves edge piece moves non star pieces as well. So you do the star pieces first and then the non star pieces. That's the only order of operations you have to worry about because if you do the star pieces first and then the non star pieces, you have to redo the star pieces. So that's a whole lot of build up. <laughs> Hi, who's joined me? Good morning, you guys. How's everybody doing today? You guys. Uh, Ready for a happy day. Um, I'm going to be focusing on. Uh, if there's anyone watching me, would you would you be so kind as to drop a hi in the chat room? Because um, I my view users in chat chose me a bunch of people, and my OBS system says I have zero viewers. So I'm kind of confused. I think you guys are out there and I appreciate you, but somebody say hi in the chat for me. All right, so the corners are done. I did that on Monday. Um, the opposite edges are done. I did that on Tuesday. Now I'm going to work on the side edges. Again, we've already established yesterday that, uh, that uh, formula A, formula B on the, moves the corners. Okay, we do that with the wooden work in the corners. Formula B, if you use the outside and inside, moves edges around. Let me show you how that works. Slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down. And the three pieces that moved were edge pieces. Okay, moves a piece from the top, fr so in the top front to the side front, and from the back top to the front top, and the other piece goes where it goes. So, again, Formula B always moves three pieces. Okay, so we've established that. So again, you line up the corners, determine which direction it's going to go, and place that piece and the other ones fall into place. For the center pieces, it's the same thing, only you pick a piece that you're paying attention to, move it to the top, slide it into a different column, where it landed becomes your second column up, and then reverse down, reverse down, and it moves, set so the top, it moves, three center pieces. It looks like it moved two, but it always moves three. Two of them are the same color, so you couldn't tell. Okay, so that being said, we did the corners, we did the edges. Now we're going to do side edges, opposite edges, now we're going to do side edges. So white and yellow are done um, as, as the uh, co corners and edges anyway. And so I'm going to put white face down. <laughs> White face down, and uh, I'm going to look for see if any side pieces need to be need to be moved. If they're incorrectly placed, I'm going to throw a rent, throw a yellow piece white face down, <clears throat> and throw a yellow piece into that side to using formula B, which will move it to the top back, and then with keeping white face down until the side is this step is done, up, up, down, down. Then I just work with the piece on top that's not yellow, which is the side piece I just placed there. Hold the top row, remove the rest of the cube until the corners match the front. You do want to line up your center first. And then determine its directions. So the blue and red is going to land above the blue and red something corner, not the blue and orange something corner. So it's going in this direction. So slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down, and there it is. Work on the piece on top that's not yellow. Corners to match the front. It's going in the blue direction. Slide up, slide second up, slide down, slide second down. Okay, and and you do this until the yellow comes back to the top. When the yellow comes back to the top, it'll either come correctly or incorrectly. Don't it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be on the top face. Just has to be on the top layer, and then we reassess. Okay, so. This piece is correct, this piece is correct, this piece is not, so I'm going to throw one of my incorrect yellows 
if there's no incorrect yellows, I throw a correct yellow, but I always work with the incorrects first if I can. So I'm going to throw this yellow down into this spot, up, up, down, down, and then I'm going to play work with the non-yellows until this yellow finds its way back to the top. So here's the piece. Hold the top, rotate the corners to match the front, determine its direction, slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down, and we just move three cubes around. Okay, another piece on top, not yellow. Line it up, 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 down, down. Yellow found its way back to the top again, so we assess. Sides are done. White's still happy, and the yellow is done. So boom, that one's done. Okay, um, same thing here. White goes face down. Find a piece that's incorrect. This one's correct, but this one's not, so I'm going to throw a, a rant yellow piece into this spot. Slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down. Okay, so we've displaced a yellow. We're going to keep working with a piece on top that's not yellow uh, until the yellow comes back to the top. Corners to match the front. Going in this direction. Slide up, slide up. First, first column is where we want the cube to land. Second column is where the cube began. So corners match the front. It's going in this direction. So top row, first column, second column. Start by moving the piece away from the action. So slide up, in, up, slide down, in, down. Every other horizontal is the reverse of the... Every other, every other move is horizontal. Every other horizontal is the reverse of the one before it. Here's a not yellow. Corners to match the front going in this direction. So first column, second column. Slide up, slide up, and there's place. Now we just put it back into place. Up, up, down, down, set the top. Piece on top, not yellow. It's going in this direction. And so this is the entirety of the cube, no matter what size, what complexity, as long as it's an n by n by n cube, and some cubes that are not n by n by n, like my wit Eden 3 by 3 by 9 can also be solved with this method. Uh, so it's just formula A brings piece to top, formula B moves three pieces around. Yellow came back to the top again, so I assess again. These ones are correct, these ones are correct, these ones are correct, these ones are correct. Now here we have, the, so I look at the top, and this is what we call a parity. This piece wants to be here, this piece wants to be here, there's no third piece to make it a triangle. So we call this a parity. And I'm going to save it till the end after I do these side ones so I can, if there's one on this one, I'm going to do them together. If there's not, then I'll work with one I've created. So white's face down. Um, again, you can work with one row at a time, one column at a time if you want to, but you can work with, if you want to work with more. For this method, you can displace yellow from the first first inside column through to the center, but you don't want to move beyond that, because if there is a, a poor parity, we want to force it to be on the same column so it's easier to, easier to work with. So I'm going to displace, both, all three of these are incorrect, so I'm going to displace up through the center. So up, up, down, down. Okay, and white's face down till this till the cage is complete, which cages the corners and the edges. Here is a piece on top that's not yellow. Hold the top, rotate the entirety of the cube. I've lined up my center already, absolute center. Corners match the front. It's going in this direction. This piece, first column, second column, up, up, down, down. That piece is placed. Here's another one corners to match the front. I will say here, this is not a speed solving method. This is not a fewest moves method. <clears throat> if you're trying to increase your speed, uh, well, uh, well, any new method you try lowers you for until you get used to that method. But uh, what this method does is it works on every complexity Rubik's Cube and <laughs> every and there's no parity algorithm to worry about. And it's only two, two formulas. You can use, you can learn this inside of two hours as opposed to spending months, weeks, memorizing algorithms carrying around a cheat sheet. So, um, also it's advantageous because if you are working with algorithms, uh, it's it's more convenient. If you do the algorithm on a, on a scrambled cube, it's hard to tell exactly what happened, if unless you're 
<laughs> your brain doesn't work like mine does. Um, but if you can, if so, so this will reset your cube to a solved position. So when you practice the algorithms, you can see exactly what moves with that algorithm. So you can then intuitively then you, then understand and internalize when to use that algorithm and when to use another one. So um, yellow came back to the top. Now, so we, re we, we reassess before we work. We, we, we don't care if a yellow is placed correctly or not. We would care about whether or not that we look at the sides. So these are correct when this one's not. Okay. Uh, I'm going to... The, these ones are all incorrect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place from here to here, I'm going to place up through the center because this one also needs to be displaced because it's not correct. So I'm going to displace the, these yellows, one of them is incorrect, one of them is not, into this side. So slide up, slide again up to them through the middle, but not past, and down and down. And we're going to keep these yellows bit bop back and forth on the top until <laughs> until it's until the yellow till the till it's done. So piece on top that's not yellow, corners match the front, it's going in this direction. Slide up. First up is where it wants to land. Second up is where it begins. Down, down. Okay, and that is set. Here's another piece. Bring it to the front. Bring the corners to match the front. It's going in this direction. Up, up, down, down. And we're just going to continue working with the white face down. We're just going to continue working one piece at a time with the uh, on top that's not yellow. <clears throat> until the yellows come back to the top, and then we assess the sides. Corners match the front, it's going in this direction. So this is... <laughs> There's not a lot of mental power required for this for this method. When I'm solving cubes, it's more, more kind of a meditative thing for me. If I want to actually be just... If, so if I just want to clear my mind, then I, I cube, because it's the same thing. It's very, it's uh, it's lousy with three gifts. It's not a speed solve method. But, and if I want to like really distract myself from something that is <laughs> running around in my head, then I pick up a minx instead because the minx uh, requires a little bit more thought because the pieces, there's, there's more sides and so you have to plan where each piece is going to go. Uh, for the cube, you just find a piece throw it in the direction it wants to be and it lands uh, for the minks because there's t there's 12 sides instead of six sides you have to kind of plan bouncing it along from side to side till it gets to where it wants to be so for meditation I cube for distraction I minks corners match the front it's going in this direction and I'm going to keep doing working with the piece on top that's not yellow till the yellow comes back to the top and then I reassess this side's done, this side's done, this side's done, this side's done. So this one did not give a parity, and this one did. So let's look at what the parity is. Um, the You can only, for when the three pieces that you're moving are all in the same layer. So for uh, for the edge pieces, they're, you know, they're all edge pieces. For the corners, they're all corners. For the centers, they're all centers. So this piece wants to be here, this piece wants to be here, it's only two. Um, when there, like I said, there's always three pieces to move around. If there's only room, only two pieces to move around, it's a lie. Parity is a lie. There's not two pieces, there's three pieces. The third piece that you can't see is the slice, the center, the slice that's touching that parity is a quarter turn off. If I move, if I rotate, the, so if I look just at this slice in relation to the rest of the cube, Two of them are incorrect, two of them are correct. But if I rotate it a quarter turn in either direction, one is correct and three are correct. Um, the only reason we, we the only reason we saw it as a parody is because our mind wants to keep track, wants to preserve what is correct. And so if you if you did not if you looked at these as correct and these as incorrect, um, you want to preserve these ones and so you, that your brain does a crash. But if you if you don't if you don't try to keep these and treat them, let them be flexible until the cube is solved, then we have three and we can fix that. Uh, so you can do that that way. Uh, I want to stay yellow on top. So instead of instead of switching to the red on top, I'm going to um, going to displace. You do apply formula B to these, which is moving those two and a third one. 
the third piece is the same layer as this one. So this is the layer that I'm going to move a quarter turn. So wherever that piece landed, this one's not correct. And these two are now incorrect. So it's the same parity. I'm going to rotate this a slight, uh, single quarter turn. And then with, with the, hi, why are you sneezing? I have a kitty cat. And now I'm just gonna place the piece on top that's not yellow until the yellow comes back to the top. And when it does, the parity poof is gone. So you can memorize parity algorithms, you can play with them and you can grumble about them all you want. Um, but my understanding is that the parity algorithm, a parity at the end of your speed solving adds like 10 seconds to your speed. So if you can do the, it, if you can do the corners first, then the edges, when you get to a parity, you just slice it away and keep going and you don't, it's, it's I think it's faster. But I'm not a speed cuber, so I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, if my if my theory if my theory is wrong, uh, drop me a link, drop me a, a chat, and tell me why I'm not thinking clearly. Because maybe I'm not. Okay, so corners are done. Edge, all the edges are done. All that's left now is the centers, and I am going to do those tomorrow. But I'm going to do a quick overview on them right now, in case you want to know. Uh, like I said, the, <laughs> the theory for the AB cube method is find a piece that's wrong and throw it in its direction it wants to be, and then move on, and then repeat. So I'm going to find a piece that's wrong. Here's a white. It's on the red side, so it's wrong. Okay, so this piece is on the front. I'm going to move it to the top, so I don't want it to be yellow. I don't want it to be blue. I want it to be white, so I'm going to hold the cube like this. Okay, so this cube, if it moves up, it's going to land in this spot. I can so I can bring down depending on how I rotate the top I can bring down this orange this white this orange or this blue okay um, I don't really want to bring down the orange because it's opposite red it means and they want to go in that direction I don't want to side distract them so I'm going to rotate it so the blue can come down so this is going to land right there and like I said for the center two columns what first one you're gonna the the cube always dictates what columns you're using so you don't have to remember <laughs> These two columns does this, and these two columns does this. You don't have to remember that. You just have to trust the cube. So this piece is going to land here. I move it up. This is the piece I'm following. I rotate the top so it's in a different column. For the corners, for the diagonals, you have to be kind of careful. So if I, so if I go this way, it's the same column. So I don't want to do that. So I go up. I move it into the second column, and that's my second up. And then I reverse to bring it back down and reverse and down. So that moved this piece up and it moved the blue piece not to here where the white piece was. It moved it over to here. So the, these were the three pieces that you move. It looks like sometimes it looks like you're moving two pieces, but you never are. Um, you're always moving three. If two are the same color, it looks like it's two. So uh, once more, here's an orange. It's going to land right there. So I can bring down the green, orange, red, or yellow. So I'm going to bring the red down because it doesn't want to be there. They, none of them want to be there, but this one has to jump twice. So this piece goes up, slide to a different column, second up, reverse down, reverse down, set the top. So I'm going to, I'll do that tomorrow. <laughs> I just wanted to give you a quick overview. Um, one viewer, see now I'm confused. I don't know how, how the OBS works because when I look at users in chat, it says I have about, about, have about eight viewers, um, but my OBS says I have one viewer. So, if you want to do me a favor, can you just let my <laughs> my one or more viewers? Can you say hi in the chat and tell me how many? If you see the chat, because I don't know how this works. If you see the chat, can you tell me how many people are actually watching me right now? If you want to do that for me, that'd be great. Just because I don't understand. Okay, so hi Watson. Watson, can you see? Uh, thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Can you see how many how many uh, viewers or chat room people that you see, or do you just see you in the chat and only whoever to whoever talks? Because can you tell me how many people are actually? It says one. Well, <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you for thank you. I'm glad you're here. Because <laughs> um, I can see more people in my chat stream, so I don't know if that. I don't know how it's if it's can people are watching or people who are actually engaging. I don't know. If anyone wants to explain how OBS or Twitch works, <laughs> educate me. <laughs> so thank you for being here, Watson. Um, 
I appreciate you. Uh, do you want me to keep going, or, should, or is this a good an, a good organic pausing place for you? Because I, I can do it. If, if it's just you, I'm going to be here. <laughs> um, so if you want me to keep going, I will. Um, <laughs> I also can incorporate Zoom into the mix as well, where I can see your cube and you can see my cube. Um, and so I can teach online. I can teach up to four people at a time. I'm a little bit discouraged that it's just one person when I thought it was more. <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, so thank you for joining me. I appreciate you. All right. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close this and I'll come back and do the centers tomorrow. Um, and if there's anything you want, you guys, any questions you guys want. <laughs> Thank you, Watson. Do come back. And I'll see me tomorrow. Bye. Thank you, you too. Thank you, you too. <laughs>